Hey everyone, thanks for stopping in the garage and today's video is going to be pretty quick. It's just uh, a video on how to correctly adjust the RPM on a Briggs flathead. Uh, flatheads don't have overhead valves. For those of you that aren't familiar, they don't have a big bulbous thing sticking out front with a valve cover on it and that's where the valves would go. That's overhead valve. These are the older Briggs flatheads. They're bigger, generally bigger, 6.5 horsepower this one is. They range between 5 and 6.5, 6, and a half, six right? So yours might be a little bit different. Um, and you can see what it looks like, right? You'll know. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it, the correct way to do it, the simple way to do it. And just first, let's just get familiarized a little bit. So again, we covered the engine. In this case, this particular hat, I call these things hats. These are the covers. Uh, this is a two-piece cover. This has to come off. It's usually a Phillips head. Generally, that's the only thing you have to take off. It makes it real easy to make the adjustment here. Um, sometimes you got to take the whole thing off because it's one piece, all right, and it covers over everything. Uh, I would recommend doing it. It just comes right off with two screws. Phillips head usually is what takes it off. Put it to the side, flop it over, right? You don't have to. It's going to be hung up on the cord here, so just put it out of the way. Then you can get in here and do what you got to do. Um, another thing I like to recommend is, is I see a lot of people use clamps or whatever. You can use a clamp, whatever you want to use to hold the engine bail back. They call it the engine brake, engine bail, zone, zone cable. I don't know, they have all different names. I call it the kill, right? It's the kill handle, right? It's what allows you to start it. You pull back in the handle, you can start it. You, know, you let go of the handle and it shuts the engine off. And it also engages the brake. It stops the blade from spinning. It goes against the flywheel. So I like to use a piece of Velcro. Um, it's just lightweight, it's easy to do, it's guaranteed, and you're going to need to have that thing running. Make sure that it's in a safe area, right? Do it because you're going to be standing to the side, so if it's self-propelled, uh, you, you, you don't want the thing going anywhere. You don't want it on a hill, you don't want it driving into you or running over your foot. Always be safe, everybody, with whatever you're doing. These machines can hurt you, so as long as you respect that and you know to stay away from the things that are moving, you're okay. Now, there's not going to be anything that you're going to be touching in here that you can really screw up, really. There's nothing spinning in this area, so sticking a screwdriver in here or uh, a pair of pliers like I'm going to show you, that's completely safe. I'm doing it where I'm shutting the engine off and I'm, I'm making an adjustment, so if you don't have a zone control, uh, something to hold it off or whatever, you can still do it. Um, now I'm using a, a simple tack, you can buy these on Amazon. I happen to like this one, I had another one that was, the battery was part of it and it worked really good. The problem is, is that it's potted with like an epoxy and when the battery dies, which it did, right, like within a month, you can't replace it. This one's kind of cool. Um, the battery is separate and I generally leave the back off of it and I just pop the battery in Right, I pop the battery in and it turns on And uh, and I'm good to go and it even has a backlight. This is also an hour meter So I like these and then when I go to put it away Just go like that and the battery comes out. I'm just gonna put it back in my toolbox. All right, so stay tuned, right? Let's bring this thing outside and we're gonna get a good look at it and we'll go through the routine on how to do it. Now, RPM, right? Now, typically from the factory, I've seen specs of 3240, 3250, right? That's generally where these engines are set. I wouldn't go any higher. That's kind of true for all of these. All of these engines, anything yard, that's not two stroke, uh, light equipment, uh, that's generally its max RPM. Even up in the bigger engines, that's usually it. I set them to 3,000. These things are getting a little bit older, okay? 3240, 3250 is nice. It's gonna give you that little bit of extra power if you need it, but it's gonna burn more gas. It's gonna run the engine hotter. It's gonna be harder on the oil. Um, why bother? 3,000, a good solid 3,000 RPMs, and you're good to go, right? That's what I feel. So, you know, you may wanna do a tune-up first and take care of a few other things. Um, on the Hondas, the, uh, the mechanism lives sort of outside a little bit more, and we'll do one next on a Honda. And they're very susceptible to, like, when you run the machine underneath the bushes or whatever, it, they can get hit, and it can mess up the RPMs. It can happen with this. It does happen. I see people hit things, and for whatever reason, they're not right. This one wasn't right. Um, starting off, it was bent the wrong direction. I don't know how that happens. It does. So yours may be in need of uh, an adjustment. You don't want to over rev it and under revving it 
Um, it'll probably cut okay. Uh, you'll be under power. I like the, you know, a 3000 RPMs, having it run at the correct RPM, it's gonna cut better. And especially if you self propel and if you like to let your grass grow, right? And it gets wet and whatever. So I'll see you guys in a little bit and uh, let's go outside and get started on this project and we'll be back. And what we're gonna be bending is we're gonna be bending this piece right here. All right, and first thing I can tell you is it's not bent correctly. So it's kind of weird and flat. And it's been bent in an inappropriate way. So I'm just straightening it out a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna tweak it like this. Now I already know it's pretty low, so we're just gonna bend it in this direction. You can also grab it from here and bend it out, pull it out. So I have the bale tied back and let's get it started. And now we're gonna bend this this way, okay? That way. Now, let's check the RPM first. Okay, so it was 2160, I just wanted to show you that. And now we're gonna twist that thing forward, all right? And we could do it while it's running too, but I just wanna, you know, for the re so you can hear me, we're gonna pull that forward, see it going forward? Now that should probably do it. Running real good. Okay, there's a little bit of oil left over in the muffler from the original startup. This thing was stored a long time. And that's it, guys. It's as simple as that, all right? All right, guys, so now this one's a little bit different. It's the same as the last one, but I, I used this top, so it's a one piece top. But you can see you can get right to where we need to get to, right? Right here. We're going to bend that lever and we're going to reach in there. It looks a little bit different, if you notice. Okay, we're gonna reach in there. Now, I'm not gonna take anything off. I just wanna show you how, um, on this model, we can get right to this adjustment. So I showed you the other model. It's basically the same engine. This is a 22-inch Craftsman, but it's the same Briggs engine. This day showing this as a 625 series, 6.25, not horsepower, but torque, right? They're always rating these things in crazy ways. It, it confuses everybody. Anyway, so let's bring it outside, and we're going to run the thing up. So let's see what the RPM is, and then we'll come back in, and we'll make an adjustment. All right, guys, so now let's start it up. Make sure it's running. Make sure it's warm, right? And, again, I recommend a tune-up first, but let's just get it. make sure it's right, running well enough to actually do this.
All right, guys, so I just figured I would show you a little bit about what's actually happening for a little bit closer view and what you're doing. All right, so this is a flathead motor, very common, and it's got, it's you know, it's naked. It's got its dressed up parts off of it. So in here is a governor, all right? It's a bunch of flyweights that spin around, the engine spinning it. The more the engine spins, the more the flyweights move out. It acts on a mechanism which comes up through this little rod here and then over to this lever, right? and the lever is connected directly to the throttle so it's actually moving the throttle here's your throttle the butterfly is inside I think you might be able to see it they're very small see that opening and closing so right now it's like full open right and so when you go to start this thing right there's no choke face on this one right it's push prime so when you go to start it it's wide open and as soon as the engine starts it's it's gonna start spinning that governor and the governor is going to try to close it, right? So what pulls it open again is this spring right here, which is connected over here to this lever. That's what we bent. So what you're trying to do is, is you're trying to counteract the governor, and the governor's trying to counteract the spring, and you're trying to set it for a static RPM, and a static, it's whatever the max RPM that should be running. It's not going up and down, and you're trying to get this to oppose the uh, this lever here and the governor inside and that's trying to oppose the spring and all you're doing is trying to find a happy balance to achieve that 3000 or 3200 RPMs that we're looking for and so just that the spring connects here this is what the whole assembly looks like right what you should be looking at and it's just that simple right it literally is so well, hopefully that helps a little bit for a little closer view and a little bit better understanding. By loosening the spring, the governor is going to take over more, the RPM is going to go down. By tightening up the spring, which is, which is lengthening the spring, by moving this lever out, right, this or this, this piece here out more, that's going to tighten up on the spring, it's going to make this, try to make the spring longer, that spring is going to apply more force to this rod, it's going to oppose the governor a little bit more, and conversely, you will get more RPMs. You'll get a, a larger throttle angle, and it's going to be try to go open, right? All right, that's it. All right, everybody, that's it for this one. Uh, I put the cover back on. I'm all done, and uh, that's it for this. Now, again, I just want to reiterate, you might really want to do a tune-up first, because to get you know good adjustment, start off with some fresh oil, uh, clean the thing off maybe with the hose and blow it off if you have an air compressor put a fresh air filter on it Pop a plug in it sharpen your blade right get everything lubricated adjust your RPM and you'll be good for several seasons Okay, so uh, you know I like to say if it ain't uh, fixed It's probably broken and I'll see you guys on the next one. Let's cut some lawns Get it Watch the garage like and subscribe